Hello and welcome to MIM TV. My name is Jason Pitt. Today we welcome Made in the Midlands member Matt Rawnsley, Managing Director of Associated Spring. Welcome Matt. Uh, I wonder if you could start by telling us a little bit about your business and what you do. Um, so Barnes Group uh, is an American company. Uh, it was founded uh, by Wallace Barnes in 1857, so approaching our 160th anniversary. And uh, Barnes Group really started out um, in the late 1800s to make wire for hooped skirts uh, and then later on springs and we've been making springs ever since um, and the company's evolved over that time into different areas um, in different sectors and different products but uh, that's in essence that's still what we do today. Brilliant and you bought a few of your products in do you want to tell us a little bit about Sure these? so really what uh, what we're known for, I think, is uh, the basic ranges of springs, which are uh, compression and extension springs, which go in everything from uh, phones, uh, toys, um, clothes pegs that we would that we would know. Um, but springs are used in are in used in so much more. So we use uh, die springs. So um, these are die springs. They go into uh, press tool applications. Um, so where you're pressing out, say, body panels for for cars. Um, well, these are painted in bright colours. Do you paint them as well? Yeah, so they we we manufacture them and then they they're painted to a, a different uh, RAL code. So the the colours basically mean different things, the different strength, different size, uh, different force those springs give. So they're they're very well known uh, within the industry, and that's actually where the Raymond brand came from originally was was around those colours, the RAL RAL codes for those colours. Um, other springs that we do, um, which don't necessarily look like springs, but they're, they're flat springs, they look like washers, but again, they give a high level or low level of force in, in certain applications. They're used in valves, for example, um, that go into oil and gas applications. And what is this? This doesn't look like a spring. So we're, what we've got here is a couple of products. So one is a, a, a gas strut, right. um, which you would see probably on the boot or bonnet of your car. Yeah. Um, now we manufacture those and um, we have a facility here in Evesham in the UK um, which puts gas inside those struts so you can make that strut any force particularly that you, that you want. Um, so that's very good for an automotive application, uh, general industrial kind of application. Here's a, a product which is rather more special. Um, so a, a gas strut there would have nitrogen gas inside it and an oil inside it. A mechanical strut is a patented product um, by Associated Spring, Raymond. And basically inside here, um, the concept is the same. It's a spring which compresses at a certain amount of force, but instead of using uh, gas and oil inside, it's nested springs inside. So the, the, the reason why we would do that is because if you're using it in a uh, say food manufacturing, um, where you don't want oil and uh, gas egress into, into the products, um, or any kind of application where the ambient temperature changes. So a gas strut is very good, um, but I'm sure you've noticed in your car, you'll get a different level of performance lifting up the boot of your car between summer and winter, because the ambient temperature outside is, is different. So in the winter, there's less force inside because there's less pressure inside. Uh, with, a with a mechanical strut, you don't get that change. So um, we use these in applications like manhole covers, uh, lifting up manhole covers in the road, um, and then also uh, refrigerated trucks. So where you have an environment where you've got frozen products mixed with other products, um, this, this mechanical strut lifts up the partition walls inside and it gives the same performance whatever the temperature is. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so I know that your company is exporting something like 80%. Uh, is that to the EU or is that across the world? It's mainly to the EU, yeah. I mean, we, we deal across um, into Russia slightly and also into Israel, Middle East. Um, but um, our European um, base is, is in Evesham in the UK and 80% of the revenue really is, is export into mainly the European zone. Yeah. Brilliant. So obviously 2016 has been a, a year of change, a lot going on. It also comes off the back of industry being... Uh, given the boost, government, um, education, a lot of people are now backing industry. Um, however, what do you think the key factors influencing industry right now are? I think from a UK manufacturing point of view, I think we're, we're right now still in that benefit phase of a, of a weaker sterling, which I think um, is something to watch out for because um, it could be something that's driving um, false optimism right now. Um, if the sterling increases and uh, is, is 
more at a parity um, with what we've been used to before, uh, that might see the, the influence on the demand drop slightly. So, you know, while we're seeing very positive signs in the, in the market right now, um, I'm hoping that that will continue as long as uh, when, the, when the pound gets stronger. Um, other things that are influencing, um, I think for us as, a, as an American owned company, um, there's a lot of noise right now on uh, infrastructure investment, particularly in North America. Um, so there's confidence in that market, which is very good for us. Um, and whatever really the, the, the feeling in the US is, I think that does have an effect on, on other markets, particularly in Europe. Um, so I think those are the, the main factors, I think, which are, are driving confidence in the market right now. We just need to make sure that we sustain that. So generally, it seems to be good news for manufacturing. Uh, but there is one question that comes up time and time again. Uh, perhaps you might be well positioned to answer this, which is how important is it for the manufacturing sector to address the skills gap? Or is there a skills gap? Uh, there definitely is a skills gap. Yeah, I think it, uh, it, it varies by industry, I would say. I think in the automotive industry, there's been a lot of investment in uh, apprentices um, in the past, particularly in our industry, in the spring manufacturing industry, um, which is quite regional. Um, most of the, the manufacturing of springs is done in the Midlands, around that sort of Redditch uh, area and the radius around it. I think there are lots of businesses which provide a great amount of value for um, customers across UK and we've been very good at exporting our products um, across the world. But many of those spring makers now are getting older. Um, it's less attractive industry to, to come into for apprentices. Um, and in the region here, we've got some very attractive brands um, in the OEM automotive space that um, those apprentices will want to go to. Um, so, and spring making is, uh, I wouldn't say it's a sexy industry uh, to be in. It's, um, it's, it's not a harsh environment, but it's certainly um, an environment that um, is probably not at the high tech end, right? It's still metal coiling, metal forming. So I think in the next five to 10 years, there could be uh, a skills gap as far as how we transition the current sort of manufacturing capabilities that we have um, and who we pass that knowledge on to. Because if we don't pass that knowledge on internally into the next generation of engineers um, and apprentices, then we could lose that business it, outside the UK. It does seem like we have an opportunity in manufacturing and it's come at a time when we need the people and the people aren't quite there. So it, it does seem to be a big issue that uh, we've got to address. Um, so aside from people, what uh, investments have you made this year? And what do you plan to make next year? Um, well, we've got quite aggressive uh, growth plans. And I think being part of a, an American company, I think that's something that we've benefited from uh, in the past. I think um, American companies are very goal and results oriented, which is, which is a very positive thing. Um, it brings pressure with that also to, to meet those expectations. Well, you've kept all your hair. <laughs> well, yeah, most of it. <laughs> um, but uh, I think for us in the short term, um, we've certainly got the go ahead to make investments in, in the business, um, not just in the UK, but also in France and Spain and Germany, where we have bases in Europe. Um, and then further than that, you know, we've, we've been making investments in capital equipment, um, storage solutions for us, manufacturing and production solutions to make us more efficient um, and also down the road you know we I think there's a good plan in place to to look at our footprint in Europe and and how we can get closer to our customers and, and increase our service levels so there's some investment coming there as well. Fantastic well thanks very much for your time Matt. How can people get in contact with you? Um, you can visit our website which is uh, www.asocspring.co.uk um, or you could visit uh, the Barnes Group website, barnesgroupinc.com, and um, please have a look at our products, and if we can be of service to you, um, we'll have a, a willing team on the phone ready to take your call. Fantastic, and of course, thanks for supporting Made in the Midlands. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe and comment, just follow the links below. Thank you.